So, for a, a long time, um, there's been sort of ideas to be able to load um, machine code files and import them. Like, so, at the moment you can import a bytecode file, like an MPY file, which is compiled bytecode. So you can put it on your device and import it and run it. But that can take a bytecode. And the idea is to be also be able to put any kind of machine code in such a file so that you can import um, sort of arbitrary executable code at runtime. So this means that you can add extensions to your MicroPython without recompiling it. You can make um, a module to import written in, say, C. Um, and, and then just import that directly. So this has been a, like a long goal for many, many years. And there's been a few attempts to do it, but recently I think I've worked out, oh well, I have a way to do it that's, that's nice and fits in well. And I'll just demonstrate how it works and what, so that you get just more of an idea of what it's about. So the idea here is we have a, a, a piece of a C function that we're going to write and we'll import it and run it directly in MicroPython. And in this file here, I have quite, I have a bit of code which sort of defines some things. You don't have to worry about it, just to show you that it's there. And it has this sort of header structure, and then trailer here. But the most important bit is this function here, foo, which is a C function. So this function foo is the thing that we're going to try and import and execute into MicroPython directly. Um, it does some setup. Um, and then the main thing here is to create the number 42 and just return that. So this function just returns 42, it's quite simple. Um, and so we'll save this. Okay, and then, um, so I have just a little bank script. Um, it's, it just calls GCC um, and then linker and then copies the, copies the data into the file. It's really just calling GCC, it's not doing much at all. And the output of this uh, is this file native.mpy. Um, and if we have a look inside it, so this is generated from that source code that I showed you before. So here, when I compile that, it generates this file. Um, and the header is sort of these first three lines here. Um, the actual machine code is this chunk here with a lot of zeros, and the trailer is just this last line there. Um, there's a lot of padding here, you don't, it doesn't need to be there, it's just there so we can expand our function later. But you can see it's quite a small thing, and it all does return 42. But um, over here, this is sort of the name of the module, the name of the function is foo, it's accessing print as well, we'll get to that later. But um, there's actually a tiny little bit of byte coding here as well, so. Uh, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bytes is actually the byte code which is initializes the module and loads the function called foo into it. Um, and then starting at this 53, that's the machine code which returns 42. And I can show you the actual machine code. Um, so this is the function. In, uh, this is on an uh, in Intel machine, x86. So this function here, is compiled to those machine instructions. Um, and the 42 is, I think it's 55, x55, um, because uh, OX55 divided by 2 is 42, um, and that's odd. Uh, so this thing here, C start 53 is the first byte, and C3 is the last one. So if we have a look at our make. So 53 was the first byte, and then C3 was the last one. So that's the machine code stored in this file. So now the, the thing that you were all waiting for, so we can import that file, import native, import that code there. Um, and then native has foo in it, which is a function. And if we call it, it returns 42. But um, so this is a pure machine code function that you. So we didn't really use Python to generate it. We used C, and it was loaded at runtime. So there's no extra compilation you need to do. You don't have to link this thing into your executable. So we could change this. So if we wanted to, um, I mean, there's a few things we could do. Uh, I have some. 
sort of demos down here. But let's create a list um, with 42 and 43 in it. So create a new list. Uh, make, I'll put it up here so you can see it. Uh, import and native.foo. Return the list. Uh, so now we could say do something like for i zero i smaller than so n uh, args. So no, that's the number of args that you put in. Um, and we need to first of all load print. So print here. I have to actually load the print function, um, and then we can call print. Uh, got to get that here. Uh, okay. So say we make a new function i. I just had some demo code. Okay. So in this, we'll just do a loop here, which will count. Say if you pass in ten args, and we'll do this ten times, and it will print. Um, Let's actually print the arguments out. Args i. And we're going to do one. And then we'll call print on the arguments. So basically, I'm just going to print out all the arguments and then return the list 42 and 43. Um, so, may. Now, this may not work. So, if we pass in one, two, prints one and two. If we pass in a list and a dictionary. Then it prints out the list in the dictionary. Put stuff in there. You can see that it's actually doing it. Oh, um, or that's really cool. numbers, really big numbers. Yep. <laughs> so it's actually this is how you're actually getting access to those things. Uh, I mean, and you could you could I'll do this ten times. Uh, yeah. So the header and the trailer are they just like standard template -y type stuff, the same for every. Uh, yeah. So we just print each thing out ten times. So the header and the trailer, uh, as you can see. Well, so now we've got a lot more code in here because we've written a bit of function. That's why I wanted some padding. Um, you can have to extend the size later if you want more code. But the header and the trailer, yeah, they're pretty much standard. You could you could have multiple functions in in this file. This is just an example of gotcha. how it should work. Um, and this, sorry, this header and trailer here is just yeah, it just describes like how big the file is, what the name is, um, what strings you want to have accessible. Um, so this is really just a proof of concept. But in the end, ideally, you, there'd be a script that would generate this thing for you and pull together any code. So this stuff would disappear or be done automatically. But it's just showing you that it's just a bunch of bytes, right? It's just a bunch of bytes that sets everything up. And in principle, <coughs> anything can go in the interior. So, very cool. Sounds good. Anyway, that's this awesome. upcoming feature. That's really oh, awesome. and this, this stuff, unmodified, well, will run, I've tested it on the ESP 66 and Fireball, and it runs exactly the same. So, um, obviously, the machine code is totally different, but um, different. Yeah. everything so you works. Different. Yeah. Yeah. You use, it, use a cross compiler. So, in this make, File the, to do it for the pie board, you use you know, yeah. just uncommon that, and yeah, it'll work. So I tested it on those, and it, that's really good. it works in the same way. I mean, so cool. could, so, yeah, cool. How were we uh, thinking about doing package management? Then? Well, that's what I was just wondering. How sort of wheels yeah. allow this? Uh, yeah. You could publish this as wheels with multiple targets. I mean, yeah, you have to take care of the multiple targets thing. Yeah. It's a bit tricky, yeah. Uh, There's going to be lots of targets, and that's the problem. Yeah, possibly the, the, the I mean, sorry? The take, yeah, take inspiration from the wheel naming syntax. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can, uh, in this file, um, this byte here tells you what the architecture is. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be different for different things. So you can't, it won't let you load an x86 on the thumb processor because it will say a wrong architecture. So yeah, you can generate different architectures and know which is which. Um, but the idea with these, obviously, is that you can, if you want to do something really fast, I mean, you could you have register access here and say, you know, read some data quickly from the ADC and do a Fourier transform and store it in an array. 
and people could yeah, write and distribute such code very easily. Um, and you could mix and match uh, bytecode as well as native code in the same module. So th th and, yeah, there's no limit to that. It's just it's just a list of chunks of code, and they can be bytecode or native code. So that's really cool. Awesome. <coughs> Brilliant. Right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave.